Hey guys, going on? Welcome back. It is episode number 15 of the Newcastle United career mode. Starting off today's episode with the draw for the Champions League quarterfinal. Well, we've been drawing against one of the favourites, Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, and of course, they're hunt to win their first ever Champions League. Newcastle United's record in the Champions League. Uh, I think I'm right in saying the furthest they've got is the second round. I believe I might be wrong. Magpies fans, please do forgive me if I got that wrong. But I think it's the second round. So we're uh, we're making history here, getting into the quarterfinals, taking on Paris Saint Germain in the last day. And very briefly on this as well, you know, there's always talk every single summer. You know, Kylian Mbappe is this the summer he joins Real Madrid? I think it'll happen until he does eventually go there. I mean, you could probably agree to join Barcelona, and a couple of weeks later they'll say he's joining Real Madrid instead. But, um, you know, I've mentioned this before. Now, listen, I say all the time football is about trophies and I'm not a professional player, believe it or not. But if I was, I do believe that, I mean, Kane is obviously the greatest example we can use right now. The individual awards and accolades are superb. But what you remember come the end of your career is surely the medals you won and the trophies you picked up with a team, right? Because football, as I said before, is a team sport. It's not a new individual sport. So of course, winning individual awards is nice, but surely it's all about that team pursuit of winning trophies. Now, when it comes down to Mbappe, like, there's, there's, there's always been talk about Kylian and saying, you know, surely he's got to leave PSG to win the Champions League. I mean, if a front three of Neymar, Mbappe and Lionel Messi in two years isn't good enough to even get to a Champions League final then surely he needs to leave Paris Saint-Germain and go to a team with a stronger base, a stronger squad, a stronger unit. Um, you know, listen, I, I understand the argument. I mean, there's that kind of joke that if PSG was a guy in the gym, th the legs are like rakes and then the, uh, <laughs> the upper body is just like ridiculously muscular. Kind of like me back when I was on my creatine cycle. I, t I, totally, I totally get it. Um, but to be fair... Um, I think PSG's side is is more than good enough to win a Champions League. With with Mbappe still being in his early to, to mid twenties now, um, still good enough to win a Champions League at some point during Mbappe's prime, if you will, at Paris Saint Germain. And I really do believe that if Mbappe was to stay at PSG and win a Champions League, I think even just one Champions League, I think that would be worth infinitely more. Then let's say three or four CLs with Real Madrid, for example, and a few La Ligas and Copa del Reyes come the end of his career as well. I think Mbappe would get a statue outside the stadium, and I think that would be a bigger legacy to leave than, like I said, a few CLs with another team and leaving PSG with, listen, about as many domestic honours as you can fit in a suitcase to Real Madrid, but no Champions League. I, I actually believe that that would be worth more, personally. That, that one trophy. And so when people talk about Harry Kane, me and my friend were talking about this recently, actually. Now, I, I have said before, I, I really do believe as though, you know, Kane, if he was to move to, again, a uh, Bayern, he's been able to link to Bayern, or if he was to move to a, uh, well, to a PSG, possibly, you know, when I was a, a successor for Mbappe for a few good years, he's going to win on us, let's be honest here. You know, because of the dominance of Bayern Munich in German football and the dominance of PSG in French football, he's going to win his first major on us. There's no doubt about that. But to be fair, Kane is only 29. Like, we were both talking about this recently. Like, people sometimes talk about Kane as if he's like 34. He's got like one or two years left in him. He's still in his prime right now. But listen, I get it. Don't get me wrong. But to be fair, if Kane was to stay at Spurs and win them their first major honour in God knows how long... Um, God, it will be worth so much more than going to, to Bayern and winning like three or four Bundesligas in a row, for example. So I do feel as though with Mbappe, that's the interesting thing that I hope he's taking into account. Listen, I'm not going to lie, like PSG, they're so desperate for that elusive Champions League. There's a bit of a disconnect right now between the fans, the PSG Ultras. And the team as well. I mean, when the, the fans are targeting, you know, possibly the greatest player of all time, Lionel Messi, that kind of shows you what I mean. Um, but I, I, I personally think for Mbappe's sake, I wouldn't go to Real Madrid yet. I'd give it another few good years and say, listen, I'm not giving up on PSG yet. We know we're going to win Liga in practically every single year and probably the uh, the Coupe, uh, Coupe Nationale as well. But... I still think I can win this team the Challenge League. And if he does, he'll have nothing left to prove. And he can sail off into the sunset knowing he's done his job and more than he was required to do so. Anyway, um, yeah, taking on PSG for our third game today on the back of the wins against Leicester and West Ham here. This will be it, the first leg against Paris Saint-Germain. I showed you their team pre-game. They're actually in second in Ligue 1 right now behind Marseille on goal difference. We're taking on PSG here. First leg. 
Well, we got through Barcelona, but I felt as though this would be a tougher tie. I fell behind early through Victor Osimhen, such an amazing forward as we know in real life and in the game. He made it 1-0 the Nigerian international, but right before the break, we would find our leveller. Yep, of course it would be Moussa Diaby with the goal, and only has he been one of our best players this season. But of course, we know as well this guy, ex-PSG Academy graduate. Yeah, he makes it 1-1, one, one, and there were 20 minutes to go. Oh, yes, my top two guys are the ones to complete the turnaround. 60 minutes to go, running through one on one. And Alexander Izak rounds the goalkeeper, Donnarumma, and pops it into the open goal. So from a goal down through Victor Osimhen, I didn't give up. And I said before, in FIFA nowadays, comebacks are really, really strong. So, oh, man, what a comeback. Seriously, what a comeback there against one of the favourites to win at PSG from a goal down to win it 2-1. It's my top two guys this season. Diaby has been absolutely unbelievable scoring against his um, his former team. Of course, PSG Academy graduate, born in Paris as well, I believe, Diaby. And, uh, of course, Alexander Rizak, who has been my top scorer this year and just un. Believable. Yeah, big comeback victory, 2-1 there. And we're nine minutes away from a place in the Champions League semi-final. Following game on the weekend, uh, not in the forest away at the City Ground, won by a goal to nil. Uh, poor game, this one. Really only got the one broad chance, and thankfully I took it. Once again, Diaby with the goal, going through one-on-one -on -one and bending at home. So, win there at the City Ground against Steve Cooper's side. God, the City Ground looks so nice in the game. You can see from the aerial shots, the, uh, the River Trent in the background. Oh, it looks really nice, doesn't it? I wish it was in the game from the start, so I could have had it in my uh, in my Nottingham Forest career mode, but even so, it looks so nice, doesn't it? I definitely would say for next year, if you're thinking about a career mode team, Nottingham Forest guys, great, great shout, especially with the uh, the amount of uh, new players they've, uh, they've brought in uh, from uh, from the start of last season, of course, and now in their second season in the Premier League, a great old team to uh, to build on for the future and try and progress them and get them back to the old glory days, if you will. So, following game, midweek, Tuesday night, Paris Saint-Germain away at the Parc des Princes, heading into the game in the French capital, leading by a goal, heading into the game, killing Mbappe, knowing he's got to perform better than he did in the first leg if PSG are going to come back to make it through. What he didn't bank on was this Brazilian continuing his amazing season for us. Yeah, he's been so big for me this year. I haven't really talked about it, but Joel Linton with another makes it 1-0. And from kickoff, we go all the way back to Nick Point, work our way forward. I think every single player touched the ball there in that build-up from kickoff. And Joel Linton, the former Hoffenheim man, makes it 1-0 out of a two-goal lead on Paris Saint-Germain in the French capital. Mbappe was quite in the first. They got a good chance there right before the break. Nick Pope and Shaw would still have a two-goal cushion on aggregate heading into the, uh, the half-time break. Still leading by one. And I know if I stay tight defensively, we are making it through to the semi-finals. And even when I didn't, Nick Pope bailed me out. Man, he's been so good, honestly. And, you know, we talk about all the money that Newcastle has spent. The small fee they pay Burnley to bring in Nick Pope. Well, I said when that deal was made, what a signing that is for Eddie Alex. He's such an amazing goalkeeper, and he was brilliant last year, wasn't he? Such a shame he ended up missing that Carabao Cup final, but even so, two big saves from Nick Pope. And whilst he would lose his clean sheet on uh, late on, sorry, as killing Mbappe did get a goal in a tie, sadly, it counts for nothing. Mbappe shakes his head as Paul Tummett walks past him. What a timeline this is. Killing Mbappe shakes his head as he's knocked out in the Champions League, but Paul Dummett is headed to the Champions League semi finals. Yup, Newcastle United into the final four of the Champions League for the first time in club history. And in the semi-finals, the Magpies will take on Atletico Madrid. Yep, Atletico Madrid in the semi-finals. Napoli face Real Madrid, who of course knocked us out last year in the last 16. So it's Atletico Madrid, who right now, I've checked the table, are actually top of La Liga right now. So it's Diego Simeone's side in the final four. And once again... I'd say very even tie there, no doubt about it. Very even tie. Both five-star teams, but we got through Barcelona, we got through PSG. I think we can get through a flat cover. An even tie, but I think we can take out Simeone's side and make the final. Even so, uh, following game, returning back to Newcastle as we would take on Burnley. Uh, Vincent Company side are travelling to uh, the northeast from the northwest. We took lead early through Joe Willett getting the opening goal of the game. And in 19 minutes in, oh yeah, Sandro Tonali gets another goal. You love to see it. Tonali heading home. Uh, another goal, I think his second of the season as he plays the role of Dead Fish there. 
making it 2-0 as we double our lead early and 22 minutes in. This is one of those games where, like, you know, every time you go forward, you think you're going to score. This was one of them. I was constantly getting in behind the back line, constantly getting the chances, and 24 minutes onto the clock. Moussa Diaby continues the sensational first season at St. James's Park. We know now that he's agreed to join Aston Villa. So he's going to Aston Villa in the end. I did say when he was... Uh, when he was um, uh, sorry, I should say at the, uh, the start of the season, I did say um, he'll either go to uh, to Newcastle or Aston Villa, I feel. I know there were rumours he was going to Saudi Arabia, but I think at his early age, he's such an ambitious young player. I mean, listen, the lure of the riches that Saudi Arabia can currently offer is enough to tempt any man. Don't get me wrong, I totally understand that. But I did feel as though Diaby was probably going to go to England. I really did feel that. And he is indeed going to join Aston Villa. Unai Emery is building something special there at Villa Park. Man, the Aston Villa fans... What a what a crazy turnaround in in 12 months for them. I mean, uh, the bit of the mess that uh, that Steven Gerrard kind of left them in at the start of last season. People thinking, oh goodness, you know, you ne you never know. We might end up going down this year. You never know. Unai Emery came in and said, nope. We're going to transform this team completely, and um, he's got them into the Europa League for next year. What a job Unai Emery has done at Aston Villa. He's building something special. A Aston Villa fans, they must not be able to believe their luck, honestly. They were looking nervously over their shoulders in Steven Gerrard's final few games, and now they're looking above and saying, well, it's Europa League next year. Who knows? Maybe one day. Top four, you never know. But uh, anyway, uh, we beat Burnley by six goals to nil. And uh, yeah, Diaby might be Aston Villa uh, in real life now. But of course, in the games with us. And he continues a sensational uh, season with the opening goal there. In, uh, no, the third goal, sorry. In uh, a really, really big 6-0 victory against Burnley. Absolutely dominated that game from start to finish. And a really big win as we continue to our pursuit of... The treble. So, yeah, heading into the following game, uh, Man City away at the Etihad Stadium, uh, taking on Guardiola's so, side, in danger of missing out at the Champions League at this point in the season right now. So, taking on the lads uh, at the Etihad Stadium here. Definitely fancying our chances of another win in what has been an amazing undefeated streak so far. Taking on Manchester City away. Well, we had the perfect start. Alexander Izak with another goal in that pursuit of the golden boot. What a lovely flick it was, though, into his path. I've said before, like the, the goals are scored this season. I really don't mean to sound too arrogant, but I really do feel it. So in terms of seasons I've had playing FIFA Karima this year, this has probably been my best for really nice goals. What a lovely little flick for a sister as we do take the lead through the big Swede. Uh, City will get back in front, uh, back on level terms though. A, uh, another Scandinavian striker with the goal. Erling Haaland uh, with the level. I would say Scandinavian, born in Leeds, but even so. Uh, Erling Haaland with the goal as the, uh, the Norwegian international makes it 1-1. And in the end, it would be a draw. So our winning run comes to an end in the Premier League. But we know we're still we're still like one or two wins away from the title at this point right now. So it's still destiny firmly in our own hands. And no doubt about it now. Whilst the treble is still definitely a possibility, the Premier League is looking now as if it's basically wrapped up. So following game, uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers heading into this game here. FA Cup semi-final in that pursuit of the treble because we won it last season by beating Wolves by a goal to nil in the final. And even though most people would have said we're the firm favourites this semi-final tie here, we fell behind eight minutes in. Matias Nunez gave Wolves the lead and I was thinking, okay, all right. Now we were lucky to keep a clean sheet in the final last year. We had a clearance off the line through Fabian Cher. Wolves played really well. So... I'm not too surprised we've got a goal down, but we are firm favourites. Let's find that level up soon afterwards. 25 minutes in, Jose Sard and I for Maximine as it is still 1-0. And Wolves did a pretty good job in the first half of keeping me quiet and not allowing too many clear-cut chances. Six minutes to go before the break, still down by a goal. And I was thinking Stan going to be trading at the break with five on the clock. He's done it once again. Alexander Izak rounds Jose Sar and pops it into the open goal. Five minutes before the break, and what a time to strike. Back on level terms, and we find our equalising goal. And Lord knows we need it. The second half begins, and I was thinking, okay, momentum's going to change, and we're going to win this game comfortably. Well, Wolves had other ideas. Five minutes after the restart, following Malogan makes it 2-1. Wolves are back in front. This was such a cool finish, by the way. Watch this on the replay here. This was so, so nice. Talk about guiding the ball in. Looks as though he's going to shoot with the right foot. Deceives Nick Pope and shoots with the left. Bends it home near post. That's a great bit of composure there from Malogan. Wolves restore their lead. They're in front. 
and I literally just could not stop them slicing me open in this game. Whilst Belogan was denied his brace by Nick Pope, Matthias Nunez was not. Ten minutes later, after Wolves took the lead, they were now two goals up. The shot saved by Nick Pope, Nunez heads in his second, Newcastle won, Wolves three. Fifteen minutes to go, and our treble dreams lie in tatters. We needed a late comeback. And with 12 minutes to go, we had it. Miggy gets the goal. It's 3-2. We are back in the game. The deficit reduced to one. But we need another one, which we could not find. Yep, final score at Wembley. And the treble dreams are ended. And no one saw this coming. Wolverhampton Wanderers. Fair play. That was one of the toughest games I've had in the save. And Wolves get their revenge. We beat them in the final last year. But this year... They get their revenge in the final four. They're into the final to take on Bournemouth. And our chance of the treble has died at Wembley. And I did not expect it. But fair play. That was such a tough game. Really enjoyable game to play as well. But lost 3-2. And my treble dreams are over. We know the Premier League is all but in the bag. Two more wins in five. And we'll have it. But with the treble dreams gone. And a tough CL semi-final against the Fledico. The question is now. Can we finish the season strong? Wrap up the Premier League. And make our first ever Champions League final. Well that will end today's episode of the Newcastle United crew. But guys, big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have a like. like. Much love to you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of the Newcastle United career mode very soon